for tuning into this episode of the Nick Egan Times. We have an awesome guest on this episode. We have Alexia Chanafili, who's a business owner of Better Brows Microblading, proud wife, proud Greek lady, and proud Greek family woman. Thanks for joining this episode today. I do appreciate it, Alexia. Hello. Thank you for having me, cuz. <laughs> Welcome, cuz. How's it all going over there? It's going well. You know, COVID is still a thing here, so it's been very different than normal times, but I know things are going to get better soon. A lot different than Australia, though, I've heard. Yeah, it's died down, but we still have our issues and pockets of it, so yeah, it's not great, that's for sure. Right. How was your Christmas and holidays? Everything was nice. It was definitely a little bit quieter than usual. Um, uh, we had to wear masks with my mom's side of the family, but it was cold here. I'm jealous that it wasn't warm like it is in Australia when you guys celebrate. Um, so what was the t- what's the temperature over there right now? Um, it's actually overcast at the present time. And to be fair, it's not like other summers. It's actually been quite overcast and rainy and stuff um i think it's because of the el nino or something to do with that it happens like once every decade so it's just this summer that it's just really overcast and not great weather so it's not usually it's not usually like this but yeah it hasn't been the greatest weather what's the temperature let's say about 23 22 degrees i don't know what that is in conversion to I'll... you because i know you guys do yeah um, <laughs> Fahrenheit. yeah i was gonna say that i'm like wait you're going to say Celsius, then I don't, I, I know, like, the conversion, kind of, but I don't know, um, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's warmer than here, so that's great. <laughs> uh, it's snowing there, yeah? It did a little bit, actually, on Christmas Eve, we had a light dusting, but we haven't had, um, like, a big snowfall or anything, but about four hours north, where my husband's family lived, they had, like, 16 or 18 inches of snow, so... Only, yeah, four hours away from us. They got a lot, so, yeah. That's cool. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you guys don't see snow over there ever, do you? Oh, we do, but it's down in Perishaw and other places down south, so not in Sydney. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, when you go further south, you can go to certain places and you can get it. Okay, that's what I... I didn't even know that, so that's interesting. Nice. Sure. All right, for the listeners, let's jump straight in. Who is Alexia Transifilu? I am a 27-year-old gal from Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. Um, I grew up here, and I went to school here, high school, college. I didn't live, like, the crazy lifestyle of, like, a regular college student where most people go away and kind of live that college life. Um, I lived at home, and I commuted. But I'm not mad about it because I really am close with my family. And um, honestly, it kept my butt in line as far as grades and just doing the right thing. So after college, I I studied dietetics, but actually I went into sales. I did pharmaceuticals, which I know sounds glorious, but it was actually very much a grind over the phone selling drugs, which is very difficult. And shortly after that, about three years later, I realized I wanted to do microblading. And for those of you who don't know what microblading is, it's a form of semi-permanent makeup that gives the illusion of real hair-like strokes. So it is, um, it's not a tattoo. A lot of people like to compare it to one. And I guess it's similar, but it's not quite a tattoo. Um, And then that's kind of where I am in my life today. Um, as far as having my own business, so, yeah, and I just got married in September to Michael. That's amazing. Um, take us, take us, yeah, take us all back to where it all began for you. You're obviously a proud Greek lady, and you come from a great Greek family. Uh, where did it all begin for you? Oh, yeah, are you talking about, like, my business? Oh, no, just like your family when you're younger, living in Cincinnati. Oh, gosh. (laughs) You never had privacy at home, but I love my family for that. They're so sweet, uh, very energetic. Whenever I'd walk through the door, I felt like some people have a dog greeting them. I had a father instead. (laughs) He would always yell my name and just was so happy to see me. Um, A lot of energy. I think that's why it was easy for me to live at home my whole life up until 
shortly after we got engaged and we bought our own home. Um, but yeah, as far as that, I mean, I've always been super close with my family. Um, let's see what else. I know I told you, um, one of the fun facts about Greeks is we celebrate name days. Did you guys do that growing up, Nick? Uh, yeah, but not to the extent of you and your family. So we did yeah. it for a worldwide, yeah. Yeah, because my mom's side of the family, my Yaya and Papu over there, I saw it more than my dad's side. Um, but, I mean, it was kind of like you're having another little birthday throughout the year where people would play cards and different games and the wives would make coffee um, you know, just have like a bunch of food spread out. So I would always get excited when it was like my mom or my yaya and papu's name day and we would go over there and it was just another celebration, which was very different because nobody else I knew celebrated that. Um, and then I also mentioned to you, um, for New Year's Day every year, we celebrate what's called the Vasilopita. Um, unfortunately this year it has been postponed due to COVID, but, um, do you do that? Uh, not to the extent, again, of what you guys do. No. Yeah, so I was kind of telling um, some of my clients about it when they were asking about my New Year. Um, it's basically where the family gets together every New Year's Day. And usually my, my grandma, my yaya, she makes a giant, um, like a sweet Greek bread. It's called chereki. And she hides a quarter in the bottom of it, wrapped in aluminum foil. And then we divide the bread up into however many people there are. And whoever gets the quarter, well, we have little flags with toothpicks. So you can put your name in each piece. And whoever gets the quarter, um, supposed to have good luck for the rest of the year where our family kind of, <laughs> everything always has to be taken to the next level. If you knew our family, Nick, you understand this. <laughs> oh, you got <laughs> No, he's the king. I know. I love him. Everybody puts five dollars in a pot. So you win the corner, you get good luck, and you get some a little extra cash on the side. So it makes it fun. There's a lot of uh um <clears throat> I guess what do you call it? Just talking smack and group chat starts right after Christmas up until that day of who's gonna win the quarter. So it's always something to look forward to every year. Um and then, yeah, now it's definitely been different being um, a wife because, you know, you, I mean, I'm so blessed to have married such a wonderful guy, but, you know, you take on, I don't want to say a lot of responsibilities because that's not really what I'm going for, but, you know, you're just growing together with another person by your side and it's, it's actually, it's awesome. I love it. Um, I'm so glad our wedding did not have to get postponed due to COVID because, a lot of people's have um, in starting March of 2020, at least here in the U.S., and we are kind of smack dab in the middle when things started getting better. It was like, oh, okay, stuff started opening back up. I got to have my wedding, but now, again, a lot of brides are having to postpone it. So it's been a crazy year, I know, for all of us, really. But, what a yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. So it actually has, like, trying to look at the bright side of things, I feel like it has um, kind of brought a slower pace life to me. And I feel like also when I talk to others, I kind of feel the same way. Instead of everything's always rush, 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 it kind of is, you know, forcing people to maybe slow down a bit, spend more time with their families. I mean, obviously being safe about it, but you know, going home, having a curfew. That's so bizarre. I never thought that this would be a thing, but... So have you still got a curfew over there? Do we still have a what? I'm sorry. A curfew. We do, at least here in Ohio. Every state's different. Um, it's 10 o'clock. So, yeah, usually last call is, like, a little bit before that, and then they want you out before 10. And what time can you leave your house to go back out? Um, I mean, if you're like on the road driving past 10 o'clock, they're not going to pull you over. At least that's what they said. I've been out past that if I'm going over my parents' house or something and they won't pull you over. But as far as like bars and restaurants, they, they're closed. So there's not really anywhere to go. 
Okay, in the morning though, what time can you go back out? So is it like six hours? Oh, um, that's a good question. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's like, yeah, I think it's like six a.m., five or six. I'm not really sure. That's when I'm getting my best sleep, so I don't even know. <laughs> Because you guys were on lockdown, and you told me something about it was, like, with your counties. Is that correct? Yeah, so basically we've got areas that are similar to your counties. So I live on the northern beaches. Um, so basically it's just, a, I guess, uh, probably the best way to describe it to, to be closest to a county of what your area and what you describe it as. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, recently we had a um, COVID cluster in our area. Pardon me. And basically, yeah, like just before Christmas, a week before Christmas, um, it was in complete lockdown my era, so I couldn't really do anything except go out and do exercise and essential stuff we you were able to do. So that was for about two weeks, yeah. Yeah, so how did they, I wanted to ask you, how do they patrol that if you, because it seems like they're stricter over there than here. Um, do they have like, like police over there? If you cross your county and go into the one next door like are you going to get in big trouble or what do they what do they do yeah it's it's set up um in a way that basically the community uh, manages it and it's not a good look if you do it um everybody obviously just wants to enjoy life the best they can and by going out and putting other people at risk you know you're you're a good chance of spreading it if you potentially have it mm -hmm. so the way they set it up is the government's very strict um if they believe that there's a cluster and it's going to cause issue and spread it across the city, then they'll just shut down the areas. Um, police do manage it. So, um, yeah, they're very strict. So if they, if you haven't got an excuse or a reason to, for example, leave my area when the lockdown was on and go out of it, um, you would have got fined $1,000. So, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. it's really really strict so th i guess that's how they've managed it the best way is because they've um, enforced it and they've made it uh, mandatory that you have to stay at home if you're in that area or wh wherever they do do it or decide to do it if there's a cluster yeah oh yeah wow i didn't realize the fine was that much that's insane i was reading an article a couple in victoria which is another state down south mm -hmm. they run away they got off the airplane and ran away i believe from the officer and they like just <laughs> ran away because they didn't want to do the 14 day counting. <laughs> and I saw they both got fined nineteen thousand dollars each. Oh my god. Wow. I can't say my I might run too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nearly forty grand. So. Oh my god. Yeah that's that's a lot of money just for that. They should have just kind of behaved I guess but there's always that one percent that wants to um you know be rebellious, I guess. <laughs> yeah, do what they want. Yep. All right, so take us back and tell us about your Greek family. I know you're very proud of your Greek heritage. Uh, what does it mean to you personally to be Greek and the culture of uh, Greece? Um, I just feel like when I grew up, um, I definitely could tell, like I have a lot of friends uh, that are close with their family, but I think I'm the closest by far, and like I said, we always joke that we're always in each other's business. It's always loud. You can't really hear yourself talk to the person next to you at family parties. We always joke about how we're the loudest ones in the restaurant, loudest ones on the plane, but it's all out of love and, um, you know, just everybody wanting to know what's going on in your life. Everyone's always really proud. We're always talking about the next thing in life. And looking at things in a positive way, um, family over everything, food. Um, we took a big trip last year to Greece, which I know you know where, is where I got engaged. And I think there was almost, I think there was like around 18 of us, give or take a few. And I mean, I had the time of our, my life and I know the whole family said the same thing. Michael did too. Um, we're just all like always uplifting one another and um you know if anybody ever needed anything we would be there in a heartbeat for each other and just celebrating again like each holiday um and for example when we have easter 
according to the Greek calendar, sometimes it falls the same as the American Easter, but sometimes it can be like a week after or so. Yeah, on um, Yeah, so just little things like that. Um, everything is always revolved around food, which I'm not mad about because I'm a foodie. I love to cook. Same with Michael. Um, what else? I think that's the main, those are some of the main things. Uh, my friends always get a kick out of coming over and going over my Yaya's house. And I remember, we still joke about it to this day. One of my friends was like, yeah, I remember we were 16, driving in your convertible. And you're like, oh, I just want to stop at my Yaya's house real quick. We're, we're by our house. Yeah, well, that real quick turned into four hours later. <laughs> I think she fed us everything that she could have she could have the you know she whipped up and they always want to feed you and it's just it's it's a good time and then um when my husband first met my yaya and papu we were stopping over for lunch and i kid you not i think we called them maybe like 30 minutes prior to arriving we're like hey are you guys home we're gonna stop over yeah 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 come over and um oh my gosh you walk in the house smells amazing they have like a five or six course meal for lunch that she whipped up in 30 minutes. That is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. That is not normal. And it was all just fresh. I don't know. Like my, my Yaya is amazing. She just can make anything at any time. And it's all gourmet stuff. It's not just like, Oh, here's some toast with peanut butter. It's like, Greek meatballs with this tomato sauce and juice and all these amazing spices. I don't even know. There's so many things that she made. And Michael was like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> we just called them. I'm like, yeah, this is normal. And then I started to realize, like, okay, this might be normal for me. But to others, the look on everyone else's face was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> these people really do like to eat. <laughs> That's great, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, always, yeah. And they love their, they love their ouzo and tipital too. Have you had those? Uh, I've had ouzo, I haven't had the other one, the latter. Yeah, tipital is, um, it's a Greek moonshine. Oh god, I don't like it. Mm-mm. But my papu, he loves it. He could drink that probably every lunch if my yaya allowed him. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I mean, um, and then I talk about the name day and the different holidays. Where would you go back to in Greece? And where would you recommend listeners to go to? Which is your favorite place? Oh, so, I mean, Santorini is obviously amazing. Everyone knows about it because it's on every calendar, postcard, credit card with the, the white buildings with the blue roofs. Um, but second, I really love Paros. Um P-A-R-O-S. It is, it just felt so authentic there. Um, you're eating dinner and the water is splashing up right next to you. Um, just the little, little walkways, um, the little stone walkways. And then you have those, um, I don't even know, like the concrete sides that you're walking past one another. It's just, it's similar to, it's, I don't want to say. It's similar to Santorini, but it still has those, like, the white buildings and the little walkways. I don't know. It's just gorgeous. You don't see that anywhere. Um, when we asked the family, a lot of people put Pottles at the top, too, when we took our trip last year. Sounds amazing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And the food is always good. I mean, if you, you won't go hungry, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember that was, that was really cool. We had the water literally like splashing up right next to us you're like oh wow I'm on the sea like and I'm eating this delicious chicken and all these drinks appetizers dessert and you it just felt like you're in a whole different country because sometimes you go places and you're like yeah this is great but you don't it doesn't always have that feel to it where sure. I don't know something different about Pados yeah. yeah we went to Milos too, and I liked it. It's just so small. Um, you're kind of limited, limited of what to do. But Santorini, obviously, yeah, everyone knows about that one. It is more touristy now. Um, 
But I mean, yeah, the views and the uh, the caldera, that cliff, those views are just you can't beat them. And then I also has, I think is it uh, Oya or Thera? I think it's Oya. They have like the most beautiful sunset in the world, and you have to get there like two hours before the sun sets to get a spot. Otherwise, it's so crowded you will not be able to watch the sun. And everyone gathers around outside, and then when the sun goes down, they clap. It's and that's every night because that's how beautiful the sunset is there. So even though it's touristy, it's definitely a must visit. Wow. You've been there, right? Uh, to Santorini? Yeah. Yeah, heaps of times. I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's probably one of my favorite places, even not my favorite place to go to on the planet. Yeah. I, I think the sunset too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you watch the sunset too, right? Yeah, I love it. I love Red Beach. There's just, uh, for me personally, I like it because there's so many different areas of Santorini you can go it like caters I believe for every type of person so if you want to go ride the quad bikes you can go swimming yep you can just do so many different things you know that relates to everyone I believe yeah and I highly suggest we did the catamaran cruise and that was probably the best day of my life I mean these these waters it, it's I mean you can see deep down it's so clean out there um it, it's like it almost looks like turquoise, but uh, it just looks fake. And um, I remember asking the guy, and I was like, "Why are, nobody talks about sharks? There's no shark." And they would always laugh at me. I'm like, "They're like every American asks this," and they're like, "No, there's no shark." And he actually taught us this, where sharks don't exist out there because they can't survive. The waters are um, so salty; they can't breathe. Wow. So I thought that was an interesting fact because I never knew that. Did you know that? No, I didn't. So you just taught me something. Uh-huh. So I'm like, oh. So then I was less, you know, I wasn't a chicken at that point to get in the water. I was like, okay. I mean, yeah, the water's really cold, but it's just so fresh. And, yeah, it is so salty. When you get out of the water, you have, like, that white film on you from the salt. But I don't know. It's so refreshing. So the catamaran cruise, yeah, they <laughs> they feed you on that too. Good stuff. So it's like a whole, I don't want to say a whole day's adventure, but I mean, it's it's pretty long. Um, You're talking like you going, I wish I was there right now. <laughs> I know, me too. Gosh, I can't wait until international travel is allowed again. And like you said, you can go on the quads. Like there's so much to do in Santorini. Um, it was funny because I remember the very first time I went, I was 19, and um, a lot of the beaches, like you mentioned the red beach, like there's all the different colors, but one of them, a lot of people kept recommending, it was um, the Santa's Black, and it's from the Volcanic Rock, you knew that, right? Sure. It is so hot that it was a little bit of a struggle to get in the water, because you have to put your flip-flops on, walk to the water, leave them right at the edge, and then get in the water, otherwise your, your feet will totally burn. Well, then it's like, oh, man, there comes a wave, and it takes your flip-flops, and then you're, like, swimming after your flip-flops. So it's just, it kind of, <laughs> it's kind of funny, because normally you don't have to worry about that. So, yeah, even though it's beautiful, the beaches, yep, you'll burn your feet. <laughs> Tell me about the proposal that Michael did in Greece. Yeah, so we were in Santorini last summer, and I had told him about uh, this winery I visited when I was there, again, when I was 19, like I mentioned. And I saw a wedding happening there. And it was down where the sunset was happening. And I told my parents, I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to get married here. And I knew that would never happen. That's very difficult to make happen. But Michael, I told him about it, too. And um, he knew since we couldn't get married there, he wanted to propose there. So... The whole group was drinking wine, and then my dad's like, oh, I want to go down there and take a picture. And it was like, you know, you go down the steps, and there's a whole, this is platform um, overlooking the Aegean Sea, and then the sun setting right there. So they waited till sunset. So we're all in line standing there about to take a picture, and my dad's like, all right, ready, one, two. And then Michael grabbed me and pulled me in front of the whole family. And got down on one knee and proposed to me, which was awesome because I was hoping it was going to happen then, but I didn't know. 
Um, I was like, oh, it should be great. We're going to Greece if that happened. But I had no idea. So I was like in such awe. And um, it was great, too, because, again, he knows how close I am with my family. And he did it in front of all of them, which makes him a brave man. <laughs> yeah, and he even asked dad's permission, the king's permission. <laughs> So, yeah, that was awesome. So we um, went back up to our table at the winery and, you know, finished off our, finished off our drinks there. Um, then we went out dancing that night with all the cousins to the clubs. And it was probably like 2 or 3 in the morning um, when we got home. So... Because they're open super late there. I think they're open until like 5 or 6 a.m. Sure. Tell me about microblades. Microblading. Um, yes, yeah, so like I mentioned before, it's a, it's a form of semi-permanent makeup that gives the illusion of real hair-like strokes. And um, a lot of people try to compare it to a tattoo. And... It's not as deep into the skin, so that's what the difference is. And um, it's about three hours, so it does take a long time. But um, it's just a lot of women are very conscious of their eyebrows because they know that it makes a difference to the face. So we map the client out according to their natural facial features. And their brow bone. I know you're probably laughing at me like, a brow bone? What are you talking about? <laughs> but uh, once we... You learn something new every day. So there you go. Yeah, it's basically your face, the anatomy of your face. So um, once we get the shape intact, then we'll start the hair stroke. So it's a manual hand tool. The blade is super, super tiny. There's about 18 fine needles in a row. And um, essentially what happens is we dip that in pigment and we make tiny little cuts on the top layer of skin. So it sounds painful, but on a scale of 1 to 10, most people find that the pain is like a 2. It's kind of just an annoying scratch. So um, once I make the initial strokes, then I add numbing. And then we go over the strokes just a little bit deeper. Top of the second layer of skin, add pigment. And then that's when the brow starts coming to life and looking like an actual brow. So what we're drawing is hair strokes. So there's a lot that goes into it. That's why it's such a, um, a long appointment. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's a very rewarding job because when I make people happy every day, I mean, that, that makes me happy. Um, I love what I do. And I'm also, I've also always been into art, so it kind of... I fell into this by accident, and it's been a blessing ever since, so I'm super happy about it. I love what I do. Yeah, I know, and I know personally, obviously, all the work you put into starting your own business, and I believe you've already booked out for a month. Is that right? I am, yeah, about four to five weeks, so. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, I remember when I had my health inspection, and they were like, yeah, we like one other person started doing this like two months ago. You're the second one in Cincinnati to open, which I was super pumped about. I couldn't find anybody doing it. So I actually trained in New York. I don't know if I told you that. You did. And you went mm -hmm. to Phoenix too, I believe? And Chicago. Yep. How did that all happen? So through my academy, um, once you get to like a certain... Um, once you get to a certain point of microblading, you can take other classes of advanced training, but you pretty much have to have the basics down. So I did a perfection course one-on-one -on -one with uh, what we call a master. A master is basically like you're like the top in the world for this. Um, there's not like a ton of them out there. So I trained one-on-one -on -one with a master for perfection training and then advanced training. Um, yeah, and that, that was great because even though my class in New York was only six people, when you have one master working with six people as opposed to one-on-one, -on -one, like, obviously I got so much more out of it. But I love traveling, so it, it was fun. New York, obviously, it's very hectic there. <laughs> A lot different than Cincinnati, where I live. So um, I was glad it wasn't, like, super, super long. I don't know if I would survive there. But I, I had fun, and I was living with my one of my best friends, Bethany, 
she kind of took me under her wing there and um I was sleeping on a blow up mattress and that was oh god that was not fun <laughs> but yeah that was great I mean I was lucky I could stay with her so I wasn't mad about it yeah well you got free accommodation so that's pretty cool and you're in New York City Mm hmm yeah yeah I was ready to get out of my pharmaceutical job and I accidentally came across microblading on Instagram um, I've always been obsessed with art, like I said, and then eyebrows too. So I guess the algorithm kind of <laughs> put microblading in front of my face and I was like, what is this? And I just became obsessed with watching videos every single night laying in bed. I'm like, I'm going to do this. There is not an option. Like, I'm going to do this. So that's when I put my life on pause here and went to New York and started learning it. Yeah. That's I never amazing. thought, I'd... yeah, I never thought that I would be doing eyebrows. That's for sure. But, um. Yeah, it's been a blessing ever since, so I love it. Is it popular there in Australia? Um, I'm a guy, so I don't know. Personally. Yeah. So I, believe, I don't know why I asked around. you. <laughs> yeah. I believe it would be, uh, yeah, I believe it would be around. So. I'll have to ask Anne-Marie, your sister. I'll have to ask her. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because I feel like the U.S. and then specifically the Midwest where I live were kind of last. Um of course, it always hits overseas, Europe, and then it comes to the bigger cities like New York, Chicago, L.A., Miami. Um, is it and then, big over there? What? Is it big? Is microblading big over there? In the bigger cities? Yeah. Um, more popular than where I am. Uh, there's some people I still meet on a regular basis where they're like, I was just told what microblading is, or, oh, what do you do? Oh, what is that? I've never heard of that. Um. People are definitely catching on quicker to what it is. Obviously, social media helps that as well. But yeah. some people still are not really sure. They, they've never even heard of it. So, but yeah, we're always, we seem to be the last with like everything as far as, yeah, beauty, fashion, and whatnot. But that's okay. It's <laughs> amazing. Mm hmm. Being, being at a young age that you still are, where does Alexia see herself in 10 years with Michael as well, obviously? 10 years. Oh, my gosh. What does that put me at? 37? Oh, man. I'll be an old goat, Nick. <laughs> um, well, we definitely want to have kids. So we're thinking two kids. Um, so probably having kids. Um, let's see. I If I have kids, I will probably not work as much just because I want to spend time with them since that's what my mom did. I guess how you grow up, you kind of want to fall in their footsteps not everyone does but I feel like I want to do that we kind of talked about that um yeah I don't think I'll ever hire people on um at work just because I kind of want to keep it more just myself and a simpler life I know when you hire people on I mean there's pros and cons to everything but that might be making my life a little bit more stress and chaotic, which I don't want. Um, if I can spend more time with my family, I definitely want to do more travel. I want to go to Australia and see you. Duh. <laughs> oh, I know. As soon as this COVID stuff are allowed, I'm, I'm there. Um, yeah. Travel kids. What else? Michael and I, we are trying to do more. Uh, we want to get into doing more volunteer stuff. And then, um, I don't know. I want to do. I want to do something. We were talking. What were we talking about the other day? Something about like going to go visit kids at the hospital. But obviously, you can't. You can't even have visitors right now. So we haven't talked about that since I don't know. Just briefly before the holidays. I know nothing doesn't sound too crazy, but I mean international travel. We had. We have Australia on our list. We have Italy and Paris. That's We were supposed to go to Italy and Paris for our honeymoon, but obviously with COVID, that did not happen. Um, where I know you've been to a lot of places. What are your favorite places to visit? I should be asking you. Um, for me personally, obviously Greece because I'm biased, but mm -hmm. I like... I like, there's like a lot of favorites and I always get asked it like, what's my favorite city or my favorite country or favorite place? Fire Greece. Um, yeah, I, I like every single place that I've been to generally for the reason that they will add value and they add something different culturally. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, like I love Italy, I love Paris, I love France, um, I love Switzerland, um, yeah, Spain. Like, there's just so many places. I love Mexico, I've been there. Um, there's just so many places just a different value and the culture of it. So for me personally, I can't just be like specifically that place is my favorite place and that's the only place. You know right. I mean? Yeah. Have you been to Singapore? Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. That's, it's funny because I've heard people talk about it briefly, but then when you look up pictures, I was like, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Like yeah, I never, really. yeah, I never really thought about that when I was younger you know you always hear about the same places like Italy and yeah I mean I'm biased too with the whole Greece thing like yeah it's gorgeous um but yeah I love trying like different foods to different countries I love ethnic food. super to like learn about the culture and uh yeah I want to go to Singapore too yeah Singapore is beautiful um it's really clean um there's a lot to do yeah, I really enjoyed Singapore. Yeah, I wonder, um, is it expensive over there? Because, for example, like, Greece, is, it's cheap. You can get, like, a whole liter of wine for, like, five euro, and everything just seems so cheap. Once you're over there, you're good. That's all right. Like, it's not, it's not, compared to other Asian countries, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's not, it's not, like, too expensive, if I'm putting in that position. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not yeah, like, it's probably one of the richer countries out of Asia. Um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's okay. And I believe to the, your US dollar, it wouldn't be that much difference. Okay. It would probably be cheaper anyway. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how every culture compares to the US dollar, so it's always interesting. Well, you've got a, apart from the UK and a couple other countries, you've got a powerful dollar, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so sweet. My family from Greece sent me uh, for as a wedding gift some euros and i'm like oh man i don't know what i'm gonna get to use this <laughs> thanks <laughs> so sweet of them i guess i'll just save it and then when we go use it but yeah that's that's funny i can't wait until everything opens back up again i know that you were trying to come over here for our wedding which thank you for that that's so sweet of you and <laughs> unfortunately didn't work out no, uh, it is what it is, and yeah, I'm hoping that once these restrictions lift, I can get over there maybe this year and do some more traveling. So, um, yeah, when they open international borders, I'll be definitely coming over there and probably going to Europe as well. Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. I know. I'm curious to see how this all pans out because I don't think that um, people are going to be so quick to jump on a plane. So I think it'll still take time to ease into all this and getting back on flights and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Alexia, thank you for your time today. I do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Miss you. Miss you more. Um, if you guys want to follow Alexia's business, you can follow it at Better Browse Cincinnati or you can follow Alexia's Instagram page at underscore Better Browse. Uh, have a good day, Alexia.